Hey, what's up guys? It's Reflex, and I think it's about time we talked about paper. I got lots of paper here. So, yeah, sometimes we talk about paper. This is the paper I have. I have Leuchtturm 191780 GSM. I have Leuchtturm 1917 120 GSM. I have Kokuyo Campus. That has my phone number on it, um, but I don't have that phone number anymore, so I'm still going to blur that out. I also have Traveler's Company, which is the blue one. Yes, Traveler's Company. I have Tomo River, 68 GSM. I have Claire Fontaine, 90 GSM. Manusmine. Uh, that one. I never know how to pronounce it properly. We also have, let's see here, Opica CD5. And then we have three different Rhodias. We'll get into those. Um, two of them are 80G and one of them is 90G. So let's go ahead and get into that. Now, if you want me to just tell you what the best paper overall is, I can't really do that. Um, like pens, paper is very subjective. And while I think X might be the best, you may swear by Y, you know? It really depends on your personal preference and what exactly you'll be using with it. Also, I haven't seen too many videos that go into depth about different papers, and I, I believe that's for a good reason. No matter how well I compare these and describe these notebooks, you'll never fully understand the feeling unless you try it for yourself. Um, I also only have a finite amount of notebooks and paper. I picked what I think are very common notebooks that can be good if you're getting into fountain pens. Um, if you want some like decent paper, better than Walmart or something to go with like your first fountain pen. I think these are some great options so we're going to get into that. And there's so many different types of paper that I haven't even seen yet. I don't even know exist and they could be the best uh, for fountain pens in my opinion. But I don't know about them. I don't have them. But this is what I have today and this is what I'm going to compare. However, if you just want the results without seeing how I tested the paper and whatnot, you can skip to that chapter or click the timestamp in the description. I honestly wouldn't blame you. I can already tell this is going to be a very long video. As you can see, I have a script off to the side because uh, I don't want to forget everything. There's a lot going on here and I want to make sure I don't forget to mention anything. I'm also holding my camera instead of using a tripod because A, the desk is covered in notebooks and B, my tripod sucks. So this is what we get for now. Deal with it. So I tested each notebook with a medium nibbed Lamy 2000 with Diamine Writer's Blood, uh, which is the wettest nib and wettest ink I own. I also used a extra fine Pelican M200 with Colorverse One Small Step, a Sailor 1911S with uh, Sailor Shikiori Shigura. Uh, let's see what else. The Moonman C1 with uh, a modded Fountain Pen Revolution Flex Nib and Colorverse Stars and Stripes. With these four pens and inks, I was able to test how the paper um, responded to broader nibs, finer nibs, flex nibs, juicy nibs, smooth nibs, feedbacky nibs. Um, I was also able to see if the paper showed sheen or shading particularly well, as well as seeing if it ghosted, bled through, or feathered. So yeah, let's go ahead and start looking into that. All right, so. First up is the Leuchtturm 1917 papers. I know I'm probably saying that wrong. I'm very rusty in my German. Um, but we have the 80G and the 120G. Um, their 80G is like the standard paper they offer, which is pretty thin at 0 0.09 millimeters thick. But I experienced no bleed through, even with the flex nib, so that's pretty good. I did find the 80G paper was noticeably smoother 
than their 120G, but we'll talk more about that paper a little bit later. While nothing bled through or feathered, the ADG does have a fair amount of ghosting. I imagine that's due to the thin pages. Um, inks don't shade or sheen particularly well, but they do dry very quickly. Um, the Lamy 2000 and Pelican M200 felt very smooth, but the Sailor 1911S felt relatively smooth, but had lots of feedback noise, which I wasn't really expecting since this paper was on the smoother-ish side. Uh, the flex nib actually felt okay, but there were some hard starts in railroading. The 120G paper is 0 0.06 millimeters thicker than the ADG um, at 0.15 millimeters thick. And while there was very little to no sheening or shading, um, the ink didn't feather, ghost, or bleed through, which is pretty nice. I would say it's good for like journaling with some basic inks. You know, it's not really going to show the pretty inks as well, I don't think. Um, the ink was also very quick to dry on this paper, this paper, which is helpful. It has a high amount of feedback, which complements the very, very smooth Lamy and Pelican nibs. So if you struggle uh, to control your smooth nib, this notebook might be worth checking out. And the Sailor 1911S felt oddly smooth on this paper. The real shame is in the flex nib again with hard starts and railroading just as much as on the ADG. So what I found is the German nibs, so Lamy and Pelican, felt really nice on this 120G paper. They felt good on this paper as well, but really nice on this paper. It's like they were made for each other. It's crazy. It felt really nice. Moving on, we have the Rhodia pads. I'll start with the paper I commonly use, which is the Rhodia number 12 uh, ADG dot pad, which is this one in the middle, if you can take a look at the back. Um, go ahead and move these over. So while I love Rhodia, this is an unbi unbiased showdown, so I'll talk about the bad parts first. Um, this is a common complaint with from others I've heard, but the ink just doesn't have crisp lines. I suppose it's like feathering to the, like the smallest degree, it's just not like super crisp. Uh, I personally don't mind this, but I know some people hate it, so I'll throw a picture up on the screen so you can see a good example of what I mean. Um, I also find broader and wetter nibs to not be as enjoyable on Rhodia paper. It just feels like the paper just kind of soaks it all up and steals the smoothness um, that I would expect from something like a Lamy 2000 with Diamine Rider's Blood. Thankfully, there's good news. It can still be great paper for some people, me included. While it's not as smooth as Apica paper, it is relatively smooth, um, as long as you're not using a super broad nib, I think. Uh, the ink is also quicker to dry here than on Apica. It's the same thickness as Leuchtturm's ADG paper at 0 0.09 millimeters. However, there's little to no ghosting, feathering, or bleeding. Um, shading and sheen are also really good, but certainly not the best. I mean, it's the best out of all these Rhodias, but not the best out of all the notebooks we tested. Um, the Pelican M200 and Sailor 1911S performed as expected, but the Flex Nib and the Moon Man sadly didn't on this pad. Um, it felt good, but it did railroad. Um, the Rhodia number 12 90G block pad was slightly smoother than the 80G, but there was also less shading, sadly. There was still no ghosting, feathering, or bleed through issues. Uh, in fact, I'd say there was next to no ghosting at all. It is 0 0.01 millimeters thicker than the ADG at 0.10 millimeters. The ink was also slower to dry on this paper. Um, it's an odd paper too. It's, it's almost as if it neuters the nib. It made the smooth Lamy and Pelican nibs feel more feedbacky but also made the feedbacky 1911s feel smoother. It's, it's weird. I don't know if neuter is the right word, but it, it like brings all the pens to one central point. And if a pen falls on the scale of feedbacky or smooth, it brings it closer to the middle. It's, it's really odd. Thankfully, the flex nib felt great to write with on here, um, but it showed little sheen from the Stars and Stripes. Um, and then the Rhodia number 11 block pad was good, except it had a lot less sheen and the ink actually bled through the page when I used the flex nib, which is no good. 
Next up is the Apica CD5, which I was comparing to the Rhodia number 1280G to earlier. Um, it is one of the thinnest pieces of paper here at 0 0.07 millimeters thick, and that certainly didn't help it when it came to bleeding. Um, the ink from the Flex Nib unfortunately bled through. The other ink didn't, but there is still some heavy ghosting from those. Um, this paper is pretty good middle ground between feedbacky and smooth, and it also had a very small amount of shading and sheen. Um, the ink was also surprisingly slow to dry with a wettish nib and ink. I personally wouldn't use this paper with a fountain pen, but I imagine it'd be nice with um, any other type of pen. Like if you have a gel pen, I think this paper would be really nice with that, but fountain pens, probably not the best idea. As you can see, the little bit of bleeding right there, and a good amount of ghosting as well. Next up is the Minima sign. I could look up how to pronounce it, but I keep forgetting to. Um, it is 70G, and it performed well in some aspects and terrible in others, sadly. Um, the ink was very quick to dry, slightly quicker than Rhodia. Um, and the feedback was actually similar to Rhodia as well. Um, there was light ghosting, however, there was some major bleed through and feathering with the flex nib. Um, at least there was a decent amount of shimmer, I guess. And there's always a bright side, I suppose. And there wasn't as much shading as Rhodia though. And again, same with the Opica CD5. I wouldn't really recommend this for fountain pens unless you're using like a finer nib. And obviously you certainly wouldn't recommend it with the flex nib. You can see that feathering, I will get a good picture. Traveler's Company presented an interesting experience. Um, I really wasn't sure what to expect when I started testing it, but I was pleasantly surprised, I think. While the shading wasn't like insanely good, there was a pleasant amount. Um, and same with the sheen, it was, it was good. One odd thing though was that the paper seemed like very ink thirsty and made my nib seem like a size broader than it really is without feathering or anything, which is odd. <laughs> my writing has like a nice smoothness to it actually, which looks pleasant I think. Um, I'm not sure how well it'll capture on camera, but I do think it looks nice in real life. It's, it's subtle, but it just kind of everything looks smoothed out. Uh, this paper is a decent bit smoother than Rhodia and showed very light ghosting as well as no bleeding or feathering. But one complaint I have is that the flex nib felt very feedbacky, borderline scratchy on this paper. So I would not recommend this for a flex nib. Um, don't worry guys, we're almost through. This is the third to last notebook, the Kokio Campus. Campus. Uh, it felt smooth to all of my nibs. I'd say it's smoother than Apica as well, slightly. Uh, it has very little shading, but the ink was quick to dry. And there was a little bit of ghosting, but no bleeding or feathering at all. And the Flex Nib definitely performed the best on here with a beautiful showing of sheen. Um, ignore the top part. You know, that's I forgot the alphabet for a little while, okay? <laughs> Don't worry about it. The Clairefontaine performed very well in most regards. It seemed to resist ink oddly, so it made my nibs kind of appear finer than normal. Um, but there was still a little bit of shading and a reasonable amount of sheen. There was next to no ghosting and absolutely no bleeding or feathering. The paper wasn't exactly feedbacky, but there was some definite resistance that made it easier to control the nib. Um, the ink was also quick to dry, which is always nice. Last but certainly not least, we have the Tomo River 68G. It is by far the smoothest paper. It's like writing on butter with butter. Um, it's just like on crack, it's crazy. <laughs> because of that smoothness, it can be a bit harder to control the nib. Um, but there is a fair, about, a fair amount of shading, which is good to have, um, not as much as Rhodia and there was a good amount of sheen as well, and the flex nib seemed to perform very well. There was virtually no ghosting and no bleeding or feathering, and the ink did take a little long to dry, but I'd say it's still on the quicker side, even if it was a little longer than some of the other papers. 
Welcome back people who skipped to this part of the video. Um, here are the results. So I gave each paper points for the following categories. Smoothness, shading, sheen, feathering slash ghosting slash bleeding, and flex nib performance. And the flex nib performance, while it clearly says flex nib performance, I believe it can kind of account for any pen with large amounts of ink. Uh, each paper received 0 to 10 points for each category. No number was duplicated in the same category. For example, if I give Tomo River a 10 for smoothness, no other paper can receive a 10 for smoothness. That just helps rank them all in order. I'll place the full list on screen, but here are the top three in each category. For smoothness, Traveler's Company was in third place, Claire Fontaine was in second, and Tomo River in first. For shading, Tomo River 68G was in third, Rhodia number 12 90G block was in second, and number 12 80G dot pad was in first. For Sheen, Claire Fontaine was in third, Tomo River 68G in second, and Kokio Campus in first. For feathering slash ghosting slash bleeding, number 12 80G dot pad was third, number 12 90G block in second, and Leuchtturm 1917 120G in first. For flex nib performance, Claire Fontaine was third, Kokio Campus second, and Tomo River 68G first. With all points calculated, Tomo River 68G did receive the most points, followed by Claire Fontaine 90G and Traveler's Company third. I'll leave all the data in the description. Thanks for watching and let me know if you have any questions. Mm-hmm.